Hello, everybody. What's up? What's up? It's me, Adrena Monet. We're back for another episode and conversation, um, just going along the journey of um, the major life transition that I am in the middle of and the midst of. And so before we go ahead and get started, started with the conversation, uh, make sure that you don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and even comment below as well uh, with anything that resonated with you or that you loved about uh, learning some new things about me maybe in this video. And then also in my description box below, you'll have some resources within um, something called my link bio. My link bio link below has um, like my cash app and PayPal in there, but then also some really awesome merch that um, that I love, and some of which I'll also be getting my hands on soon enough as well. And so get into my link bio slash Adrena Monet, and you'll find some really good, oh, my Pinterest. My Pinterest is lit, okay? If you're not on my Pinterest board just casually or even following following me on Pinterest, you need to get your life. That's all I can say about that. My Pinterest has um, a health, wellness, and fitness uh, health, wellness, and fitness content. I've also got, um, I have all kinds of content on there, honestly, that can help out like my ladies, the gentlemen as well. So check out my Pinterest uh, content that I've shared out of just various sources and all of that, and you'll get your entire life. Let's go ahead and get into the video. So from the title, you guys can tell that you'll be learning more about uh, my professional and business life as well. And so, um, ooh, my nose is itching, you guys. Ooh, live and in full effect. So um, you guys learned, and I think my last video that I uh, do lifestyle management or personal lifestyle assisting. And so I've always done that. It's just always been like a part of how I'm wired and how I just like to serve and all of that on a more professional and business level. And so honestly, just thinking back to give some history to how that gift and talent in me started to be cultivated. Um, even back when I was like a teenager, like 15, 16, I, I was the right hand to a nonprofit um, nonprofit founder of a nonprofit. I don't even know if it still exists or what have you or where this lady is nowadays and all of that, but she had a nonprofit for um, imprisoned mothers. And so it was called Agency for Imprisoned Mothers, the Agency for Imprisoned Mothers, I think. It was called AIM for, uh, AIM for short. And so like with that, I helped her out administratively, but I'm pretty sure I helped her out with like putting care packages together for the moms um, that were imprisoned for all kinds of I'm sure crimes that many of them did not commit. And even then, you know, the system injustice wise in this country is a sham, a scam and all of that, right? It is what it is. Um, a level of the modern day slavery that still exists here in America and always will. And so um, I was her right hand. Um, then like in my professional life, uh, prior to being laid off and all of that in my early twenties, back to back to back and all that kind of thing, I was the right hand to like dealership, like infinity dealership, um, Infinity, infinity dealership executives and, you know, the big ways and all that of these car dealerships and stuff like that. Uh, I've been the right hand to uh, a private couple I used to work with back in like 07 or maybe it was 08. Well, two private couples. One couple, the husband was um, like an airport executive at Hartsfield, Atlanta. The wife was an OBGYN. It was actually a Jewish couple. It was a Jewish couple I used to work with. And then um, around that same time frame, 07 or 08, I used to privately work for a couple where the husband was like a CPA or, or something to that effect. And the wife was self-employed with whatever business she had going on. Uh, and so, yeah, I've just, I've just, I've always served that way in the military. Uh, you guys might have a military background in the Navy or from the Navy. And so I ran a weapons compound at Naval Station Norfolk. I ran a weapons compound at Naval Station Norfolk, but I also, within that, there's like an admin side to all of that. Um, some of the admin stuff at the compound, civilian, former military uh, employees, you know, do those do those things. But there's also an admin side for the military side. And so I ended up um, being the right hand to my E7 and my chief, uh, my Navy chief, and then also to my commander um, at the at the command as well. So I would do like the books on the ammo and the books on the weapons. And then also we had other units. Uh, I worked with a lot of like, I worked with, I worked with a lot of army. I worked with a lot of army, uh, air force, joint forces, all of that as well. So it wasn't just Navy personnel that I interacted with on a daily basis. I worked with all the other, maybe not Coast Guard so much, but the Marines and all of that. I worked with a lot of Marines and all of that. So we housed their weapons as well at the compound. And so um, there's an admin side to all of that. There's, of course, my commander, even though he's an 05, he still has people that he has to answer to above him, the admirals and, you know, all that shenanigans. And so, um, yeah, I was my E7 and my 05's uh, right hand. And trust me, I was the right hand. Uh, I know my chief used to hate when I would go on leave or go on vacay because they would see me throughout the year. I'd be working, working, working. I'd be, I'd be visible. Uh, 
but then I would be visible because I'd be racking up like 90 days of leave at a time. And I would take off like 60 days uh, of leave at a time because I didn't want to be there. Okay. <laughs> and so uh, that's kind of how that went or whatever. And then, um, gosh, since my military days, I've been the right hand to a syndicated, apparently she's on V103 now here in Atlanta on occasion or however often they have her on V103. She's got no integrity, so on and so forth. So I was her back when she, back prior to her V103 days, whenever she's actually on there, um, she was on like a more, I guess, syndicated or independent radio station or how a radio works fully. And so I was her right hand and all of that. Um, didn't get paid nothing, but you know, folks don't have integrity. Like I told y'all, folks don't pay their bills. Folks will send for an invoice that they don't want to satisfy. Um, and I ended up fire, ended up firing her the day after Valentine's Day in 2017. She got fired as a client because it just got to being too much. Um, as far as her lack of integrity, um, me being overworked and severely underpaid, all of that kind of thing. Um, radio personality. Um, I've been the personal assistant to. Oh, child, somebody supposed a Christian recording artist. I won't even say her name. Um, and just otherwise. And so I love what I do. Um, I do it because I do love to serve. Uh, personal lifestyle assisting. It involves um, sometimes administratively, but like with that Christian recording artist, I went on tour with, I, I was actually on tour with her back in 2015. So I've been on tour with a client before, which was actually pretty nice. I like traveling. I mean, in case you guys couldn't tell, I like to travel. So. We went like we went to the Midwest. We went to the yeah, like Iowa and Florida, Detroit. Like we went throughout the country um, in a matter of only a couple of weeks because she ended up doing some really shady stuff, and then stuff just went stuff just stuff just went like kaput. And I still don't even know why. But we don't have integrity. And then she owed me money when it was all said and done. I'm like, I've worked for the money that I'm requesting from you. Like it was crazy. I had to chase her down for like 30 days to collect. Um, a satisfied invoice for what services I had rendered to her and all of that. So again, people don't have integrity. I don't make this up. Okay. I've lived it so I can speak on it and I will speak on it um, because integrity still matters. Um, yeah. Um, you can still excel and do well in life and financially and otherwise by having integrity. Like you don't have to be shysty and grimy and stuff like that. Like, although it seems like all those people are prospering. That's what it seems like. Um, you know, my, my day of just reckoning and, uh, my day of breakthrough and all of that that I really deserve is finally coming. So I'm really, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've been on tour. Um, man, tour life, but I actually want to go on tour again. Like I did it with somebody in the music industry, you know, someone that has integrity and stuff like that. And mogul type person, that'd be kind of cool to go on tour again with someone. Um, those are, those are definitely intense days. Like those tour days are like 18 hour days, 19 hour days. Um, and, but I enjoy it because I love what I do. And so, yeah, lifestyle assisting can also include me uh, managing the household of a client. So whether they're in town or not in town, um, they tend, you know, they have these mansions and all of that, you know, 8,000, whatever square foot properties and that type of thing. Uh, or even five, maybe, I don't know, 5,000 square feet. Is that really a lot? I guess 5,000 square feet could be a bit too. So like anywhere from like 5,000 plus square feet homes. And so you've got laundry for the household. You've got errands for the household. You've got contractors and stuff like that that come in for landscaping and, you know, uh, media rooms, entertainment room setups and stuff like that. So while they're doing out the house or in the house, maintaining business uh, endeavors or whatever, you know, that's where I come into play. Maybe with some contracted staff as well to assist me with some extra hands on deck uh, to get things done on a given day. And then, of course, when they travel, you know, suitcase life, luggage life. And if they have kids, for instance, younger or older, helping, you know, keep uh, the kids going and all of that too and organized and all of that so i've done a little bit actually uh with the couple going back to the story the couple that was the husband was a cpa and the wife was self-employed with whatever business she had going on um their son they had they had two older kids like the house was massive it was like a five million dollar house um in cobb county georgia and so upstairs the adult kids like upstairs it was like an upstairs apartment the main level had bedrooms and bedrooms and the master, the master suite was on the main level. The the bottom level was the basement. So I slept down there and all of that. So I lived in the house with them. And then upstairs was like upstairs apartment apartment for them and their dogs. They had like three dogs, a bull, a bull mastiff and like two other dogs. And so um, oh, I lost my train of thought with this story. Oh, no. Oh, was, it, was, it was a good story, you guys. Oh, man. The couple, CPA. Oh, no. I lost my train of thought. Oh, anyway. So, yeah, they're home. 
again, like their laundry, uh, cook for them and stuff like that. I guess that was the point of that story. So yeah, I cooked for them, did their errands. Oh yeah, their son had autism. That's what it was. They had one, so one of their younger sons or the, the only younger son, he was about 10 years old. He had autism. So that's how I ended up actually securing that client back in like 07, 08 is because the son had autism and I've had autism experience even prior to that. So um, that's how I secured that, you know, secured that opportunity, so to speak, or what have you. And so, um, so yeah, but uh, all in all, I love what I do. Like I said, it's just kind of like, you know, some folks, they can sing, some folks are good at choreography, some folks can do the whole makeup thing, some folks can do, you know, people have like their different gifts and talents. I mean, there's all kinds, right? So people are like really... Uh, tech, technically minded so they can build like they can manufacture phones and design this and design that or whatever but we all have our gifts and our talents and stuff like that so it's a matter of how you cultivate it over time how you master your craft and kind of evolve as well inside and out so uh, serving people not just business wise but also the philanthropy side of me of course involves serving so you know the whole point of me having and thankfully being blessed that I've even been on red carpets and been on tour and stuff like that with uh, former clients it's the fact that um the whole much of the point of that is not just to be financially profitable and and wealthy and all of that um but also to give back like i love to give back i've actually given back way too much <laughs> and I actually could have been moved out the country by now if i had not given to if i had not given to um many of the wrong entities and organizations over the years so playing catch up and all of that um at this point in my life but you know i'm just so hopeful um more hopeful than i've ever been um despite you know being bamboozled <laughs> being bamboozled by very deceptive uh, deceptive people okay and so um i've been giving back for instance like um the past six years alone i've been giving back to various villages actually in ghana ironically enough because um like my stepmom she has um like loved ones and other people um that live um in the villages which uh, anyone that maybe is not familiar with africa that might be watching right now so villages in africa are just the equivalent of like the countryside or you know more rural areas here in the states that's literally all a village is um some people can be impoverished not far out of a suburban area and then of course you've got rural rural i hate that word you have rural areas um in any in any country and so our more uh rural areas um here in the states the, the equivalent of that in africa um in any nation in africa would be called the village and so um i'd be giving like housewares you know cooking gear cooking wear uh, utensils, clothing, shoes, and stuff like that, of course, in clean condition and all of that, um, you know, in good condition and even new condition in some cases. I've been giving items to the villages, shipping them over for like six years now. I actually have some items now that need to be shipped over. Um, but yeah, so that's a little bit about, about what I do on the philanthropy side. Um, the profits of my business endeavors, not just the personal assisting, but some other things I want to get into when I do move to Africa. Um, yeah, I want to, you know, I want to live good and comfortable and all of that. But honestly, um, I can't wait to get into African investing and all of that. And then, of course, um, also have my philanthropy side of um, what I do, because that's just at the core of my being. I'm not selfish at all. Some of y'all know I'm not selfish already. And, uh, you know, you have yet to meet me in person and all of that, although it feels like we already have met in person. But um, you guys know that I'm, I'm generous and I'm thoughtful and all of that. And you haven't even begun to see how thoughtful I can be. So um, stay tuned for that, I guess. But yeah, so I love, love, love what I do. I'm looking forward to finally having a good client. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Um, and that's pretty much it. I did not even take notes for this one. I took some mental notes for this conversation. So I can't think of much else to share. But yeah, that's what personal and lifestyle assisting or sometimes called being a personal concierge or also sometimes called lifestyle management. All three of those things are the same umbrella, if you will, or the same arena of service, um, business services. And so um, and even personal wise, because again, people's households need to be maintained and all of that. So I don't think there's much else to share. Uh, relative to what I do business wise. Um, I've also been known on a on a business level. I've had uh, book editing clients. Uh, it'd be cool to, you know, have some book editing clients uh, in the future as well. I've edited, oh gosh, I feel like it's been about four or five books for um, for clients, for private clients of mine that I got myself, obviously. Um, but I've edited like four, five, six books in the past six or seven years, more like seven years. And so, yeah, I do book editing as well, um, whether it's biography wise or whatever genre of books and all of that. I'm really awesome at my book editing. And so um, I've been known to take on that 
type of project on the side as well of what I do on the main on the main line. But other than all of that, y'all, I've been talking for about 15 minutes. So we're going to wrap this up. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, comment below as well. Share out the video. Uh, share out the video as well for anyone who uh, maybe needs to know that they've got gifts and talents that they just need to maybe cultivate and um, maybe talk to someone who's close to them that they can that they can confide in to discover more of what their strengths are and how they can be used, how they can be used, how they can be monetized, not for selfish gain, but because you have to eat, you have to eat, you have to live and all of that. You may have a whole family to take care of or a part of, you know, you may have people that you're responsible for as well. And if you're not financially able to do so, that can be challenging, you know. Um, love is great, but financial, um, good financial standing and uh, abilities are, are helpful as well to make things happen. And so uh, that's pretty much it. So I love y'all. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode that should be coming out about next Tuesday. Tuesday seems to be my uploading day. I've had New Year's Eve. I had last Tuesday, I think it was, and there's today. So Tuesday seems to be my uploading schedule that may change every so often, but the goal is to be consistent and all of that. So I will talk to y'all later. Thanks so much and have an amazing rest of your day or evening. And I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.